Welcome to another video, Dr. Mike Hansen here, and you've probably heard by now that monkeypox is making the news. Scientists at the CDC are collaborating with officials from the Massachusetts Department of Public Health, and they're investigating a situation in which a United States resident tested positive for monkeypox virus on May 18th after they returned from a trip from Canada. They're also tracking multiple clusters of monkeypox cases that have been reported this month in several other countries that don't normally report monkeypox, including Europe and North America. And for this reason, it's becoming a concern. Now, as of right now, it's not clear how people in those clusters were exposed to the monkeypox virus, but some of the known cases include people who identify as men having sex with men. So let's jump into what monkeypox is and the most important things that you need to know, like what causes it, how to prevent it, what are the symptoms and its treatment? Monkeypox, it's an orthopox virus and it was first isolated in the late 1950s from a colony of sick monkeys. The virus itself is basically the brother of the smallpox virus, but person to person spread and mortality is much smaller compared to smallpox. There's two distinct strains of monkeypox that exist in different regions of Africa. The strain from Western Africa is the less virulent strain now, it's widely believed that monkeypox virus has infected humans for thousands of years in sub-Saharan Africa, but wasn't actually identified as a cause of disease in humans until the 70s. And that was in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Of all the reported 59 cases in the 1970s, 17% of them died. How did these individuals get it? They were exposed to small forest animals like rodents, squirrels, and yes, monkeys. During the African outbreak that occurred from 1996 to 1998, that mortality rate was 5%. The first outbreak of monkeypox virus in the Western Hemisphere occurred in the United States in 2003. This virus, it's typically acquired through contact with an infected animal's bodily fluids or by means of a bite. Now, monkeys and humans are incidental hosts. The most likely culprit animal for being the reservoir host? Rodents, including prairie dogs. That U.S. outbreak that occurred in 2003 consisted of 71 cases, and they identified or they traced that infection back to prairie dogs, which appeared to have acquired the virus from African rodents when the two species were housed together in a distribution center in Illinois. It's also important to note that a complex exposure for example, a bite wound from an infected animal is much more likely to cause severe infection compared to a non-complex exposure, such as simply touching or petting the prairie dog. Most of the human cases had direct exposure to animals, although person-to-person -person transmission could not be excluded. So again, this was the 2003 outbreak in the United States. But unfortunately, human-to-human -human transmission can also occur. Now, one way is by means of large respiratory droplets. But unlike COVID, the virus isn't really good at spreading this way. For example, with droplet transmission, it likely requires someone sitting face to face in close proximity, like six feet or less, for a period of three hours or more. The virus is much more likely to spread when there's close contact with infectious skin lesions, especially during sex. But also it could occur where it gets in the saliva and it's in your oral mucosa there and you can use your imagination of how it could spread at that point. After smallpox was eradicated, the vaccine for smallpox was no longer needed. But one of the added benefits of the smallpox vaccine was that it also offered protection against monkeypox. But since monkeypox was very rare, it was hard to justify keeping that smallpox vaccine around for that reason. So the WHO said, we'll just keep a close eye on that matter. From 2005 to 2007, there were 760 confirmed human monkeypox viruses. This study confirmed the concerns of increased prevalence of monkeypox due to the lack of the prior smallpox vaccination. In fact, those with a history of smallpox immunization had a five-fold lower risk of monkeypox infection compared to those who were unvaccinated from smallpox. So now let's fast forward to July of 2021, not even a year ago. There was a patient who was diagnosed with monkeypox in Dallas, Texas, after developing symptoms from his return trip from Nigeria. Then fast forward to this month, May 7th, in the United Kingdom, there was a person identified who recently traveled from Nigeria and he was confirmed monkeypox. A week later, six additional cases were identified in the UK, but these weren't associated with recent travel to an endemic area in Africa, 
or a close contact with a person known to have monkeypox. Portugal had five confirmed cases and more than 20 suspected cases, all young men. Spain with eight suspected cases, and there's other countries with suspected cases as well, including Canada, Australia, Italy, and Sweden. These cases were not related to travel to Africa and appear to be related to the outbreak in Europe. Just recently, there was a case identified in Massachusetts after that person recently traveled from Canada. That person did not have any known travel to Africa. Health officials in Montreal, they're investigating 17 suspected cases, mostly men aged 30 to 50s. Those Montreal cases did say that they found links between their suspected cases and that case in Massachusetts. And for those cases in Canada, most of them are in men having sex with men. So it brings up the question, is this truly a sexually transmitted disease? Right now, we don't have any data on whether or not this is actually in seminal or vaginal fluid but no doubt that this virus spreads by means of mucous membranes, skin to skin contact, and it's in the saliva. So you could use your imagination of how that's spreading. So what happens if you get the virus? Well, the incubation time, meaning the time of exposure to the time of developing illness, is about 12 to days, give or take, but the majority of monkeypox infections are asymptomatic. But if you do get symptoms, you're looking at fevers, chills, muscle aches, swollen lymph nodes, and the famous painful but not itchy rash that you see in all those pictures. Typically, about two days after the fever starts, the rash appears on the chest and the back, and then it spreads outward to the palms and the soles of the feet. The lesions, they're about 0.5 to 1 centimeter in size. They start out as spots, and then they progress over the next few weeks to form vesicles or like blisters and pustules. And in the end, they scab up and slough off. During that first week of the rash, people are highly infectious, but they can actually spread that infection up until the time where their scabs start to separate from each other. People should remain isolated until those scabs start to separate, but also until their throat swab PCR tests negative. Sometimes people do require hospitalization, mainly to receive supportive therapy, like IV fluids and medications to help with symptoms but most patients have mild disease and recover without any medical intervention. In these new cluster of cases that are occurring this month, some patients had proctitis, meaning inflammation of the prostate gland. Some also had lesions that are only around their genitals or their perianal area or both. Although the clinical signs and symptoms are pretty straightforward, the diagnosis can only be confirmed by means of lab testing. So that way you can be sure it's not something else, such as other pox viruses, especially varicella, meaning chicken pox. Are there any drugs to treat monkeypox? There are some which are actually approved for treatment of smallpox based on animal models, particularly the antiviral drug ticoviramat. And if someone has severe disease, it can be combined with another antiviral called brinsidofovir. Ticoviramat, it's a potent inhibitor of an orthopox virus protein that's actually required for the formation of an infectious virus particle, which is required for its spread in the body. So when you inhibit that protein, it inhibits the spread in the body. And this drug, it's given for 14 days. Previous smallpox vaccination has a significant protective effect against monkeypox virus. In September of 2019, a modified Vaccinia Encara vaccine was approved for prevention of smallpox and monkeypox. So moving forward, what are we looking at? There is a risk that monkeypox could become endemic if the outbreak isn't brought under control, especially if that virus spills from humans back into the local animals. But overall, the risk of this happening is very low.